Hey guys, I was screwing around in the shop and accidentally did a tool review, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. A few months back, I got tired of working with my anemic craftsman cordless tools, and I got on Facebook and asked several of my craftsman friends what they use at work and why they like it and that sort of thing. And the answer I got almost unanimously was Milwaukee. So I went to the local supply house and I asked them what they thought about the Milwaukee tools that they repair versus other tools. And they felt like overall, if you're going to go with a line of tools, that the Milwaukee was a solid choice. So that's what I did. Now the main tools that I use out of that kit are the Sawzall, the Skill Saw, and the Drill. These quarter inch hex head drivers, I never really use. I, I, when I look at them, I think of exactly what they were designed for. And that is running lag screws in the wood and running sheet metal screws in to sheet metal. In fact, this setting, this number four setting here, right there, that setting is actually a self-tapping screw mode for running screws into sheet metal. So this gun, that's what it's built for. It's built to run, you know, eight inch lag screws into wooden posts and to run sheet metal screws into sheet metal for building barns and that sort of thing. So that's what this gun's made for. It is not a mechanics tool. Was it meant to be a mechanics tool? And as such, I just, I had rare use for it and honestly hadn't used it at all until I accidentally did this review. Um, that said, uh, it, the, the, the tool kind of shows us some interesting concepts in torque and uh, it also kind of, kind of impresses so continue to watch and, and see what happens. Um, just for clarity's sake, I've got the Milwaukee website pulled up in front of you. And uh, Milwaukee says that, of course, this model number is the 2753-20. And they say that it has right here 1,800 inch pounds of torque. Once you divide that by 12, it's 150 foot pounds of torque. Um, the tool's lightweight. It does have an LED light in the front. Uh, it's not terribly noisy. It's very, very easy to operate. It feels good in your hand, of course. Uh, it's tapered at the bottom and, and bows at the top. When the battery's in it and when the battery's not in it, it sits up well. I have removed the belt clip because I think the belt clip is stupid on these. It's just way in the way. I'm actually left-handed, so it's super in the way when you're left-handed. Um, so anyhow, I just took the belt clip off. Um, but anyhow, let's, uh, let's look at some of the performance of this tool and you can decide for yourself if you think it's pretty, uh, stout or not. She's on level three there. Let me see what she does. Ooh. It wasn't very hard at all. I wonder if that was loose. Let's try this one. Oh, oh, oh. That just popped right off. Look at that bolt. It's not exactly uh, clean or whatnot. I'm going to get a ratchet actually and see how hard, how well stuffed these things are. That's on there. That's a, that'd definitely be a whole ordeal to take off without an impact. Uh, you know, here, let's, let's properly wedge it, I guess. Uh, let get her done.
Come on. So I can't tighten her, loosen her. Can't go any which way I want to with that. That sucker's on. So let's see. Let's see if this thing can even tighten it. So there we go. See the numbers there? So. Oh. I am impressed. I don't think of it as a serious mechanics tool. But what I do think of as a serious mechanics tool is this snap-on gun back here. So, I'm in the process of removing this track bar bolt. And the snap-on gun's not budging. So, I've got a half-inch drive set up with a wobble. And watch that hole on the socket. I mean, it's not going anywhere. And I'll skip ahead with the air compressor. Shuts off. Well, no, because I don't want you to think I did anything. I'm going to keep right on trucking. Let's see if this does it. Saw that? You see that? That did what that could not do. Well, there you have it. The Milwaukee outperformed the Snap-on MG325. Now, I want to say something that's going to bother a lot of people. I don't think that this Milwaukee makes the same amount of rotational torque here at the drive head as the Snap-on. In other words, I believe if you were to take this gun and you were to put it in one of those Wilhelm hydraulic torque measures, it would measure right about 150 foot-pounds. And if you put the MG325 in that same machine, it would measure at 325 foot-pounds of torque. So why would this gun take off something that a gun with literally twice the torque could not? Well, there's two reasons for that. First, let's talk about what you're doing with torque. Ultimately, what you're doing with torque is creating pressure between the threads of the bolt and the nut or whatever thing you're screwing the bolt into. That pressure is in between the threads here. So you twist this and this gets tighter and that tightness is that pressure, okay? Uh, the tighter it is, the higher the pressure. And then there's a pressure overload point, of course, where the threads would start to strip, okay? That pressure can be overcome one of two ways. One way is by twisting this fastener with more force than that pressure is holding at. Uh, another way is to vibrate this bolt with enough vibratory force that the molecules in between this bolt and this nut actually create their own space because of the vibration. And once you open up that space, you have effectively decreased that pressure. So one thing I think is going on is the Milwaukee hits faster. So because it hits faster, it creates more vibration, thereby making that space that I just discussed. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you or you think that's a bunch of malarkey, then you can call Mayhew and ask them why they make that. That is called the Mayhew Shake and Break, and I assure you that it works. And the way it works is, is you attach your air hammer to this end here, you put a wrench on that end and an impact socket here, and you beat on the bolt or nut, and it does come off. Um, and the way it works is with this vibration that I'm talking about. So I think because this hits at 3,700 impacts per minute versus the snap-ons 1,400, that it creates more vibration and gives itself an advantage in that vibration. Uh, the, the, that steel helm Wilmore or whatever the, whatever that deal is called, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't compensate for that. It doesn't have a way to, to measure the vibrational advantage that the higher blows per minute, um, uh, give you. So that's one thing. Secondly, the tool stack matters. So you can take an Ingersoll Rand commercial super awesome impact 
and you can put enough extensions on it to where a four-year-old can hold that extension and that impact gun will not turn that extension. And that has to do with how the impacts are built. The way an impact is built is you have a drive motor, whether it's pneumatic or electric, doesn't matter. And out of that drive motor, there's a shaft. And that shaft turns a hammer carriage. It doesn't turn the drive shaft, it turns a hammer carriage. And there's these weights on the hammer carriage. And as the carriage turns, it spins those weights. Those weights move into a position where they impact the anvil. So when they call the head of an impact gun the anvil, that's appropriate because you're hitting it with a hammer. So the hammer hits the anvil, gives it a turn, hits the anvil, gives it a turn. So because there's not a solid connection here, on this end, whatever tools you have connected, they have time to rebound. So there's a hit and then there's time for a rebound. And that's why the torque stick works, which is basically a tuned spring that rebounds against the, um, the impact gun at a given pressure on this end. So if you put enough extensions, it might take 100 yards of them, I don't know, but you put enough extensions with all that little micro play in between those extensions, between a one-inch Ingersoll Rand pneumatic impact and a four-year-old's hand, and I assure you, at a certain point, that four-year-old will be able to hold that impact. And that's another issue. In that stack, I had a three-eighths to half-inch increaser. I had a wobble extension, and then I had a socket, and there's a wobble there. So all that stuff, when you hit here with the impact gun all this stuff has to hit before it hits the bolt and then all that stuff can rebound and at 1400 blows a minute from the snap-on I don't think it was hitting fast enough to accommodate all those extensions where at 3700 impacts a minute it could keep all this wasted energy or, or all this energy from rebounding and since it can keep this energy from rebounding, more of its torque could communicate to the bolt where the snap-on was losing torque in the drive unit. So anyhow, those are the two things that I think gave this gun an advantage. And both of those advantages came from the fact that it hits faster. So there you have it. So when you're looking at an impact gun, if your end result that you're looking for is to remove a bolt, not only does the torque number matter, the blows per minute also matter. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for an impact gun. And uh, if, you're, um, if you're in a pinch and you need to get into a narrow spot to remove a bolt in your uh, automotive work, reach for your little hex head driver. It will absolutely remove just about anything that you need to get off. Um, thanks guys. If this was at all interesting to you, please like, comment, and subscribe.